early vision, and they take the glasses and take them back to him, you know, to see if you can get a cut rate price on them. So, I'm back to them. You know, they don't even use the frame, you know, maybe for somebody else. Um, you know, they give them a good price, you might get The, there is a bill that is uh, supposed to be in this next election. The way that bill reads, uh, the chances of it passing is good. Because what it's going to do is going to give you health care where you don't have to pay all that money. Uh, and there's going to be three or four bills there. So if you're one of those that go and vote, make sure you read everything that's there and also look at the other end of what's going on. Because these are called herbs. Vitamins and minerals are basically the same thing. Now that bill, in case you want to deal with it, uh, it's S 2835. And this will be the bill. You can basically pick this up, pick this up in any health food store. And they'll have a lot of other information there you know, to deal with it. And it'll, it'll stay in here, you know, and when you read this, it all looks good. But there's one little column over here that makes it look bad. And that is, is that they want all Americans basically to be on vitamins, minerals, and herbs. Which, if you look at that, it sounds good. But under the jurisdiction of the federal government, which means that there won't be any health food stores in existence. So now, in order for you to use an herb, vitamin, or mineral, you have to go see your doctor. You just can't walk into a health food store and use the expertise of people that's been in business, you know practically all your life. You've got to now rely on somebody you know that has one month of training or less to tell you what to do about your health. Because when it comes to a vitamin and an herb, there is nobody in a pharmaceutical place that knows anything about it at all. Nothing. And doctors don't know, they even know that. So what would happen is, is that now you would be in the hands of a doctor that has a choice of giving you medicine and also giving you uh, vitamins, minerals, and herbs. And you know they're going to go with their training. Their training, you know, they've been in school, you know, for eight years or more just to use chemicals and drugs. And that's what's going to happen. They're going to have you using chemicals and drugs and the vitamins, minerals, herbs just going to sit on the shelf because nobody's going to be recommending them to you. And it would be against the law if you were caught using these things. Or it would be against the law if you are caught growing. Because one of the things in the executive order is to seize all farms and control them. Which means that that goes along also with this. Even though it doesn't say it on here, if the government sees the farm, then the government can only put it under the control of what they came up with. So that's going to be something that's going to be very important. And for those of you who know that might be in here that might be distributors of some herbal product, then you might want to think about that too because you might have a great business going. Well, no longer would you be able to do that. You know, some of these would be selling new body products, some would be selling uh, Bohemian diet, correction connection, or maybe sunshine, herbal life, or any of those other products. If you are, then you won't be able to sell those products. Right time, that could be against the law. 
So because of that, you know, a lot of us are beginning to say, you know, there's a higher law to look at. And Amen. that's the one, you know, that we are turning to. And most of the time when we look at that higher law and act upon it, we usually are looking in the mirror. And just say, you know, okay, you don't have to go out and broadcast what you're doing. You know, just do it. Because we are basically, I don't say we, you know, because when I look around the room, everybody looks like me. The way they do it. So, um, you know, we have to have, we are, we are the only people on the planet that is being studied on a day to day basis. And this has been going on probably before anybody in here was born. On a day to day basis, you're being studied. And for what reason? You know, and the more and more that you study, the more and more that comes up, you know, against you. Now, I want to show you basically a slide presentation that is dealing with some of my clients. And and then, you know, you know, if you got questions, I'll jot them down and we'll see if we can answer any of the questions that you might have. Because I'll probably make a lot of statements, you know, that might be out of some of you while I'm talking. And the, you know, it may be of interest to you to know, you know, why. But most things, you know, comes down to just reason. The, uh, so, one, I want to get out of the way before we start, because I also have some things in there that will show some of almost anything that I'm talking about. And I'll try to not say anything that I can't prove in this room. You know, where you won't have to go out of the room, you know, to find out, you know, whether I'm right or wrong. But, uh, and, and I think it's, you know, fair to do that, you know. You know, have you walking out, you know, thinking something different. And, you know, if a person comes up and you think that what I'm saying is too far out in the left field, you know, just raise your hand, you know, a little, Go back to the plate and we'll deal with it. And uh, if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. I put it that way. But uh, I'm going to try and not say anything you know, so that that won't come up. And I'll be fair enough, right? If it is, it is. Yeah. Um, I put some things on the board over there. We started at the top. Just want to you know, show you something that's happening here. Because uh, this could be very important. But at the top, starting down, taking the first one. Now, I'm not going to pronounce his name simply because I can't. But uh, starting at the top, coming down, that first one that is up there is really used in paint removal. Now, you can get your encyclopedia, look it up, and it'll give you anything that I'm saying at this particular point. Uh, the second one is you, it's a chemical used to kill lice with. You ever know what lice is? Mm -hmm. It's a chemical used to kill lice. The, the third one is used in making plastic and rubber. Right. Right. It's used in, in uh, 
all these things. And the, the last one, that is the last one, right? The last one is the night trading song. Now, here's what you can do, you know, with each one of those things. You know, if you want, you can take a, Okay, you can, you can mix these things together if you want to. You can mix some antifreeze, some oil or paint, uh, solvent, you know, nitrate solvent, solvent, or lice killer. And you can take all this stuff and you can mix it up together and then add milk to it and sweeten it to taste, freeze it, and eat it. It's called ice cream. All these things that, that you see on that board came off of the ingredients of ice cream. So, you know, if you happen to be one of those, uh, how you dash to have it down <laughs> You know, if you happen to love this ice cream, 31 flavors or whatever. Now the thing is, is that you are looking at some of the ingredients that may be in your ice cream. And then you would wonder, you know, why is it that the body acts the way that it does? You know, why do we have all the illnesses and the deficiencies that we have? Well, you know, ice cream happens to be one of the things that is very big, you know, used to be very big in our diet. So we found out that we had a lactose tolerance and we started cutting back on it. But by putting more sugar in, it became addictive because sugar is the most addictive drug on the market. Now, sugar is number one, and cocaine and heroin would be like seven and eight. So you can see how bad sugar is, and there's a lot of things between that. Uh, dairy products just happen to carry a drug called DES or diethylstilesterol. And uh, the DES and the domestic spelling on uh, and it just happens to be the second worst chemical that you can, a drug that you can get into the body. Now, one of the things that has happened at this particular point, you know, you'll probably, it'll probably be about two or three months from now, you'll hear about this new virus, AIDS type virus that is out. Yeah, but they're going to tell you basically where it's coming from. How they get it. The deal is, you could be looking at it right now on the board. Because it has a lot to do with a number of things that they tried to make changes. One is that the, I'm going to call it the old virus, you know, the, the HIV virus, or the AIDS virus itself. And there is a slight difference between the HIV virus and the, and the AIDS virus. You know, they have a lot to do with each other, but at the same time, you can be HIV and never get it. That's important, I think, to know. Um, but this new virus is coming out. One of the reasons it doesn't show up is because the immune system is being broken down by this stuff. The more sugar you put into it, the more it multiplies into the body. And it's going to show up simply because if they would test the body for drugs, they find out, you know, that the virus they're looking at is really a drug that comes from sugar and the thing that they build around the sugar. Now, the, the AIDS virus is made up of two components, and that is the Dysna virus, which comes from sheep or lamb. You know, it's an agent that they put in there, you know, to Well, make it produce more or whatever. And the bovine virus comes from beef or cattle. These two viruses put together happen to be the AIDS virus, which also brings up something else. <laughs> that is that you can sit down at the table and eat yourself into AIDS. All you need is something to culture it which, you know, if you eat a lot of cheese, then you have that present in your body already. 
because cheese can cause candida, which is a yeast infection, and the cold. And then this will allow the virus, you know, to grow mix. And once that happens, you could end up testing positive rabies. There's a number of other things too, you know, the darker the skin is, you know, the more likely you're going to test positive for AIDS anyway. You know, just the pigment in your skin alone can make you test positive. And because the tests that they're using really, there's only two tests that they can run, you know, one in this country and one out of the country, which is in Germany. They can really test for the AIDS virus, period. So, you know, you can definitely keep that in mind. Sometimes they don't understand what's there and they may tell you your test false positive because they know that whatever it was they was doing to you, you should have had AIDS. You know, whether it's your eating habits or whatever, you should have had it by now. So since you don't have it, it goes back into the study of wondering why is it that we can't kill this body. And there's a number of things that's going on. One of the reasons this is being picked up is because this new strain that's coming up is basically affecting white people only. And that within itself, you know, has really got their attention. The old virus, they could care less about that. They've never done anything about it anyway. But this new one is coming up. They spent more money on it already than they've ever spent dealing with the old virus. Totally. And that's dealing with all the countries in the world. The, uh, the big thing about the AIDS virus is that it, it was caused by sexual contact. That needs to be analyzed. Analyzed for a number of reasons. One is, is that if it was caused by sexual contact, why is it that they can't find an autopsy being ran on the body and find the virus in the genital area? Syphilis and all the other transmitted diseases by sex, you can find it in the genital area. The AIDS virus has never been found in the genital area. So that's something you know right there to look at question. And the deal is they can say all they want to about you catch it through sex, but those people that died didn't catch it through sex. So they got to come up with somebody that died, they caught it through sex. The way you tell that is that you check the genital area and you find the virus. You know, it's just like if something came through that door over there and it walked in the door and stopped turned around and went back out. And all of them standing here looking at it. And then this screen comes up missing. They didn't take it. <laughs> right? Would you agree with that? Yeah. You know, it's the same way with the AIDS virus. If the AIDS virus came in the door, it's going to be found in the door. So if you had sexual contact and, and the AIDS virus came through sexual contact, it's going to be found there. Not someplace else in the body, and escape where it came in. Um, if it's if it's not a sexual transmitted disease, what do you think the AIDS is caused by by diet? The let's say ninety percent of the people that have, that have AIDS roll up their sleeve to get an AIDS test and was injected on the spot. With the virus. With the virus. You can go in and tell them, you know, that you're sexually active and you're out there, you know, screwing everybody. And when you put that down on paper, they don't even have to take a test. They'll mark you up positive right now. But look at, look at the thing. If you get into sex, why is it that most of the people 35 and under are the ones that have the AIDS virus? But you know that all the 50-year-old people out there been having sex a whole lot longer than the people you know that's 35 and under. And, and uh, if you've had sex longer, and that's the way you get it, it seems like people that are over 35 would have more AIDS, you know, than the ones that are under. But we're talking about, you know, like 85% of the people are better is under 35. Why do you think they're saying that? That's the way that this is being transmitted. Is there some way to cut back our uh, reproduction? That's what it is. Cut back our reproduction. Last week, 
last week, the, no, this is last week. This is, yeah, last week, they were doing a thing on uh, the sperm bank. And they kept telling everybody, they were going around talking to the people, trying to get them to stop giving their sperm to the sperm bank. Because they had a lot of people out there that they were the biological father of, and they didn't care. But one of the reasons they were doing that is that they've been doing this for 25 years. And it's turned out that out of the 25 years of them doing it, this is their test, what they gave on you know, the news, that none of these people have had offspring. I mean, 25 years of age and less, and there has not been one offspring through the sperm bank uh, deal. So if you look at that, you know, it's something that they haven't been telling us for a long time, and that is, is one of the reasons why is that white people are not producing. They can't. And it turns out that there's 25 million people out there that went through the sperm bank. That's a lot of people, you know, 25 million. That's 25 million that they will own up to, as they say. Yes, Well, they probably would, but the deal is, is that usually uh, they wouldn't be dealing with uh, the mixing of the two. You know, they may deal, you know, with, with uh, let's say, the cow. Yeah. And then that's all that they're dealing with, the cow. But not taking the virus that is in the cow and splicing it together with the virus that's in the sheep. You know, this is a laboratory thing. You know, you know sad to say it, you know. I hope no nobody can work with the CDC, but that's where it came from. Y'all know where that is, right? <laughs>